In this video, we're going to take a closer look at boundaries. We're going to create a new 2D boundary. We're going to add some levels to that boundary, and then we're going to set the initial conditions for the model. When we first set up our 2D zone, you might remember that we set the boundary conditions to normal. So we allowed water to actually escape out of the 2D zone, giving no consideration into what's actually happening downstream. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add a tailwater level at the downstream boundary where we've got this open water body. So to do that, we go to the line object. Make sure that you've got the snapping mode on because it's important to snap to the 2D zone. And then we simply draw our new feature. Give it the name, tower level, and the type will be a 2D boundary. Now over in the properties, we're going to change the boundary line type from a vertical wall to a level. We don't need to do anything with the bed load or the suspended load because we're not doing water quality modelling at this point. So now our 2D boundary line will actually override the free out ball that we had on the 2D zone. Now that we've done that, we just need to commit the changes. Now that our network's ready, we need to set up the level data that we're going to apply to the tower water level. So to do this, we right click on the storm tutorial, get a new level. I'm going to give it the name Tower level 1% AEP. Double click on the object to open the information. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the time step. So if I type in the levels that I'm going to use, which is 1.8, you'll see that the current time step is set to one minute. So we want to set that to a longer period that's going to last longer than the duration of our simulations. So if I go to the sub event properties, and I'll just change that to 1D for one day. And as long as we're not going to run models over 24 hours, that should be sufficient. Last thing I need to do is right click again in the column and go to the profile properties. And we just give it the node reference, which is the actual 2D boundary. So that will be TWL. Then we can just go to file, save and close that object. Now if we run the model as it is, with just the tower water level at time step zero, we're going to get a bit of a surge of water into the 2D zone. To avoid this, we need to set up an initial water level for the 2D. So to do this, we go to the storm tutorial, go to new, and we're going to use the initial conditions 2D. And I'm just going to use the default name there. Double click on the object, and then we just need to fill out some details. So the zone ID will be the 2D zone. The zone type will be 2D zone. The variable will be hydraulic. So the other options here are if you're doing some water quality or you're doing sediment modeling. The level type can be depth or elevation. So we're going to use the elevation and we're going to set that to 1.8 to match the tower water level at time step zero. And then we can close the object. Because our 1D network is connected to the 2D, we don't need to set an initial water level for the 1D because ICM will actually calculate that automatically during the initialization of the model. So we've now got everything we need to be able to run this model again with all the boundary conditions. 